Okay, we're going to start our trigonometry unit, and the first topic we're going to look at is measuring angles in radians, and how we calculate them, how we convert them from degrees, why we use radians, that type of thing. The first thing you want to understand is a radian is just a different way of measuring angles. You should know from Math 20 that we typically measure an angle from the zero, and we go around counterclockwise. So if I had an angle of 70 degrees, it's measured from the zero up, something like that. If I gave you a, an angle of 210 degrees, we know that 180 is there, so 210 would be all the way around. And we can go 210 minus 180, so we know it would be 30 degrees past that 180 line. And if I gave you an angle like 300 degrees, we know it's going to be somewhere over there. And the 300 would be the same thing as 360 minus 300, which would be 60 degrees downwards. So we either write them like that, or sometimes even write them as a negative. So so a 300 degree is 60 degrees downwards like that, so we'd write it as 300, or we could even write it as negative 60. Negative 60 would be just going backwards. So, so degrees you should be comfortable with. You've used that a long time, but now radians works the same way, but it's just a different unit where instead of dealing with degrees, we're dealing with sort of whole numbers, or quite often we get fractions and that type of thing. How a radian works is it's just basically measuring the angle as a comparison to what the radius of a circle would be. Because when we do an angle, we're just going around and around in circles. We're basically saying, how does the radius compare to, to, the, to the distance that you go around a circle? So one radian is actually defined as the distance around a circle that would be the same as the radius of the circle. So if our radius here and our distance here are the same, that's equal to one radian. So our angle would be, we call it one or one radian. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So the first thing is exactly what I just said. What is one radian? Well, it's the, the distance of one radius of a circle. And we can actually simplify that a little bit, a little bit. We know that the circumference of a circle all the way around the circle is given by the formula 2 pi r. But on a unit circle, we say the radius is 1. Just to make it simple, we call our circle a radius of 1. So that means our circumference then is 2 pi. So that means if we go all the way around the circle, wherever we start, if we make one complete revolution, we've actually covered 2 pi radians. So a complete circle would be 2 pi radians. So that means a half a circle would be 1 pi, and we can go from there. So what we do is, let's kind of draw our diagram here again. So we know that if one complete circle is 2 pi radians, that means half would be pi. Half of a half, or half of that would be pi over 2, or 1 half pi. And the other one down here then would be 3 pi over 2, or 1.5. So we have 0, starting at 0, 1 half, 1, 3 halves, and back to 2. The pi is just there to save us a little bit of time in writing decimals. But we could. If we wanted to, we could write radians as decimals. So pi, we know, is 3.14. So that would be the same as 3.14 radians if we went all the way around. Half of that would be 1.57. And if we went 1.5 times pi, that would give us 4.71. And if we went all the way around, we'd get 6.28, approximately, right? The pi has a, more decimals than that. So that's it. So basically, we just need to figure out where, where these are. So if I gave you an angle that said it was 1 radian, where is 1 radian? Well, 1 is going to be, you know, if that's 1.57, 1 is going to be maybe something like that. If I gave you, if I told you that we had 2.3 radians, well, 2.3 is going to be somewhere in there, and so on. 5 radians would be somewhere down there. Okay, so you get the idea in terms of decimals, it's pretty easy. What, what, quite often what we do is we deal with fractions. So if I said, where is one-third pi, then we want to basically be a little bit more careful with our fractions. So let me erase these whole number ones, or decimal ones, and let's look at some fractions. So we know that one is at 180. So that means then we'd have one-half halfway. So if we went a quarter of the way, so a quarter of the way would be the same thing as 45 degrees, right? Half of 90 degrees is 45. If we went a third of the way, so if we went 90 degrees divided by 3, that would give us 1 sixth. And if we went 90 degrees um, divided by 2 thirds, like 2 thirds of the way then would be 1 third. 
right? So those are common angles of 60, 45, and 30 are going to be common fractions. We get pi by 3, pi by 4, pi by 6. That's kind of how we want to memorize those ones. So those ones are very common ones. We're going to be using those lots. So yeah, those are key ones to memorize. If we had a fraction, something like pi by 5, it's not a common one. Our best bet would be just to convert it or figure out where it is. So pi by 5 would be you know, somewhere in the middle of these, something like 40 degrees or whatever. So how do we convert back and forth? Well, we got a couple options. If it's in degrees, we just basically times it by pi and divide by 180 because we know at pi that's equal to 180 degrees. So that's the easiest way to kind of do this conversion. So if I give you something like 40 degrees, we just have to times it by pi divided by 180. So as a decimal, you can just type that in on your calculator. So you'd have 40 times 3.14 divided by 180. And that gives us 0 0.698 radians. Or, because we can keep this in fractions, we can basically ignore the pi and just go 40 over 180, which would be the same thing as 2 ninths. So we could write that as 2 pi over 9. So they're both the same, just different ways of doing it. Do we want to leave it as fractions to be a little more accurate, or do we want to convert them to decimals? And it doesn't matter what the degree is, so if we could, we could do, let's pick another one, if I picked uh, 310 degrees, times it by pi, divided by 180. So on your calculator, you can just go 310 divided by 180, and leave it as a fraction, and that would give you uh, 31 over 18. It doesn't really simplify, so you can leave it as 31 pi over 18, or we could times that by pi to actually get 5.41 radians as a decimal. Okay, so either way it works pretty good. The next thing you want to be able to do is can you convert the other way around? So if I gave you radians, so if I gave you something that was in, let's say it was 2 pi by 3, and we want that in degrees, you just do the opposite, times it by 180 divided by pi. So in this case, because I gave you the pi's, they would cancel. So we just get 2 times 180 is 360, divided by 3 would be 120 degrees. If I gave you the question where it was in as a decimal, so if I told you it was 4.35 radians, do the same thing, times it by 180. In this case, we'd actually divide by pi, because we don't have a pi there to cancel. So times it by 180, divided by pi, and that gives us an answer of 249 degrees, approximately. Okay, so converting back and forth is something you'll do lots of, and it's just simply times by 180 divided by pi, or times by pi divided by 180, depending on whichever way you're going. So now, the next thing is, what does coterminal mean? Well, a coterminal is just an angle that repeats over and over again. So in terms of drawing an angle, if I said draw me an angle that's at 30 degrees, you could draw it like that. But if I told you to draw me an angle that's at 390 degrees, you'd go all the way around to get 360, then you'd add on 30 more, that would give you 390, which is in the exact same location. So coterminal just means a, another angle that's a multiple of itself. So we're just basically adding 360 or subtracting 360. If we went backwards, negative 330 degrees it would be in the same location as well. So all of these angles, 30, 390, negative 330, those are all in the exact same location. So if they're coterminal, we're going to find out later that sine, cosine, tangent all gives you the exact same answer because they're really they're all the same angle. They're just a different way of locating it. So a coterminal angle is something that repeats itself in a multiple of 360, or if we're dealing with radians, so if I gave you an angle that was pi by 3, and we go around and around, basically we're just adding on 2 pi, which is the same as 360, over and over again as well. So you can see in this diagram, we've got 45 degrees. Add 360, we get 405. Minus 360, we get minus 375. Oops, that should be 275. We get the same angle no matter what. One other uh, thing that we do with this is we can actually use the radians to calculate the distance of travels or the arc length. So when you're dealing with these, the key is you have to be in radians. And whatever our angle is, if I give you the angle in radians, let's suppose I have 1.2 radians as our angle. If we know the length of the radius, so 
So let's suppose it was three centimeters. That means the distance it traveled in terms of the circular part is just simply the angle in radians, 1.2 times three centimeters. And our answer would be 3.6 centimeters. So that's our distance that it would travel. So it's an easy formula. The key is you just got to remember it's your angles in radians. So if I gave you the angle in radians in terms of a fraction, so let's suppose our angle is pi by 6 and our radius is 2 centimeters, we can still do it. We would just have pi by 6 times 2, which would be pi by 3 if we wanted to leave it as a fraction, or we would just actually divide it out and we'd get a length of 1.05 centimeters or whatever our units are. Okay. If I gave you the question where the angle is in degrees, so let's suppose I gave you a 2 as a 45 degrees, and we have a radius of 5 centimeters, only thing you ought to do differently is change the 45 degrees first. So change the 45 to radians, which would be pi by 4, then times it by 5, and you're done. So whatever that answer would be, it would be 5 times pi over 4 gives us 3.92. That doesn't sound right. Let me try that again. So pi divided by 4 times 5 is... Yeah, 3.92. That's right. So 3.93 if we round it off centimeters. Okay, so let's do a few more examples. How do we convert back and forth? So we want to change these to radians or degrees, whichever, and we want to draw them on the grid. So 135 degrees, let's draw that first. So 135 would be located, if this is 180, 135 would be located somewhere about there because that's our angle all the way around. And more importantly, our reference angle would be 45 degrees here, right? 45 plus 135 would give you the 180. So there's our location of the angle. Now in radians, what we want to do is go 135 times pi over 180. And when we reduce that as a fraction, we would get 3 pi by 4. Because it's a nice fraction, it's better off to leave it like that. If it wasn't, then you'd change it to a decimal. So 5 pi by 6, do it the same way. We want to change it back to degrees. So we'd go 5 pi over 6 times it by 180 divided by pi. So we end up getting 150 degrees. So in terms of our location on that one, 150 would be here. We'd have 30 degrees up from 180. And that's it. So 5 pi by 6 or 150 work out to be the same. The last one, it's just a regular number like 4 radians. So you want to go 4 times 180 over pi. Because it's not a, a fraction to start with, let's just leave it as a decimal. So 4 times 180 divided by pi gives us an answer of 229.3 degrees. So that one would be located at something like that. Or we went... 49.3 degrees past the 180 mark. Okay. So let's do a couple more being talking about coterminal. So if we have an angle that's 210, so 210 is over here, so that's 30 degrees past. We want to figure out what are the coterminal angles if we went around twice. So starting at 0, 360 would be one revolution, so we, that would give us 210. If we went around a second time, we'd have 210 plus 360, which would give us 570. But we could also go backwards. The negative 720 says go minus, so minus 360. So 210 minus 360 would give you negative 150. And minus 360 again would give us minus 510. And that's it. So those are all four angles, just depending on whether we went around positive direction 360 or negative direction 360. If we get the angle in radians, do it the same way. So negative 3 pi by 4, so that's going to be going backwards, and we're going to go backwards a 3 quarters of the way. A good way to do these fractions is think of it as, so there's our 0, this is our pi, but in terms of a fraction, that would be the same thing as 4 pi over 4. So 3 quarters of the way would be, if it was positive 3 quarters, it would be somewhere in there. 
but since we're doing negative 3 quarters, it's going to be downward something like that. So that would be negative 3 pi by 4, because we were just going from 1, 0 to 1. So we'd have a quarter here, a half here, 3 quarters, and then one whole one at the 180 mark. So that's it. So basically, we're just going negative 3 quarters would be our starting one. And this one, again, we're going from negative 4 pi to 4 pi. So we're going around twice. So negative 3 quarters is our first. What we want to do then is add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi as we go around. So if we subtract 2 pi first, 2 pi, 1 pi is 4 quarters we see here. So 2 pi would actually be 8 quarters. So 8 or negative 3 take away 8 would give us negative 11, should be the other one. And if we go the other way, negative 3 quarters plus 8 would give us 5 quarters. And if we add 360 again, that would be 8 plus 5 is 13. And that's it. So those are our four possible angles if we go from negative 4 pi to positive. Remember, negative 4 would be like negative 16, so there's no more past that. Positive 4 would be 16 quarters. So we're good. We're in between those two numbers. Some people have trouble dealing with fractions, and that's totally fine. If you want to work with degrees, you can do that. So what we could have done with this question is just change this original one into, um, it would have been negative 135 degrees. So you could have just solved it as degrees. Negative 135 minus 360 would have been minus 495 plus 360 is... I'm having trouble doing this in my head here now. So negative would have been 225, I think it is. Add 360 again would be 585, and we're done. So you can do it in degrees, and then from degrees, convert each to radians, and you get the same fractions. So whichever you prefer makes no difference. And one last question dealing with arc length. So they're saying this road in Regina acts sort of like a semicircle with an angle of 207 degrees, it's asking what would be that length if you drove from A to B the way I drew it. So all we want to do is we need to know the radius, which it is 4.9 kilometers. We need to know the angle in radians. So we want to change 207 degrees to radians. So we go 207 divided by 180 times it by pi. We get 3.611 radians. So our distance or arc length will be the angle, which is, or the radius, which is 4.9 kilometers, times our angle, 3.611. And we get an answer of 17.69. And because our question was in kilometers, our answer would be in kilometers as well. And we're finished.